How's it going guys, Kels Prime here and today I wanted to talk about a few things. We have a new trailer, early access drama, ongoing microtransactions fiasco still continuing, Grandmaster Lockout at launch and yes the hot inferno topic of PvP. If you want to be in with a chance to win a digital copy of Anthem for the platform of your choice, click on the link in the description below for details. So let's start with the trailer as it really is amazing. You are the chosen few, protectors of our world. This is your time. Out there, you will fight the unimaginable. Feel the power of your javelin, its precision. Rely on each other. Unleash your power. Never give up. Ready, Javelin One? Let's go! You are freelancers. I think I've watched it at least 10 times now. It's so well put together. My hype for the release of the game gets higher and higher with each passing day. I have combed this trailer, but sadly there is nothing here to be gleaned. I do however want to know more as to how the storm utilizes the power of the Anthem. Hopefully the story will deliver on this as well as give us background lore on the Legion of Dawn, run by Helena Tarsis, whose group in turn split to create the freelancers that we are now. Interesting stuff, right? Next I wanted to go over the release schedule. Now I get it, we all want to get our hands on this ASAP and people looking at this chart will be saying, what the hell EA, why all this silly mystical magical Harry Potter with Guardian Leviosa crap? Why must EA be like this every time? Well, I guess many of those complaining have been living in a cave or honestly, I don't know. Now I've never liked early access, I think everyone should be on the same playing field. Even Jonathan Warner agrees on this, but the simple fact is, Sony is the one outright refusing to allow EA access onto the platform. I mean I wish they would, it would mean I could finally play Battlefield 3 again without having to switch to my Xbox One, but sadly Sony do not. Early access for EA Premiere and Basic on PC and EA access on Xbox One has been available for quite some time now on EA releases, be it Battlefield or the like. Anthem isn't the first to do this and nor will it be the last. If you're upset about this, it's Sony you should be addressing, not EA. I'm sure EA would love to have EA access on the PlayStation platform. It's more money in the end, right? It's a no brainer. However, to those that are finding this difficult to decipher, here it is. EA Premier subscriptions get to play the full game without limits on the 15th of February. EA Basic on PC and EA Access on Xbox One get to play for 10 hours on the 15th of February. This time is time played and not active from the point you start playing. By this, I mean if I start now and play for 2 hours, the remaining 8 hours won't just expire. It's time played. Finally, everyone including pre-orders and the PS4 will gain access to Anthem on the global worldwide release on the 22nd of February. I really hope this clears things up and any BS people may think EA is pulling here. They really are not. This has been a standard practice for EA for quite some time. If you support their platform, you gain early access. It's that simple. And the fact that Sony don't allow for this, well, that's a Sony thing and not EA, because I'm pretty sure EA would love to be able to gain access to the PlayStation platform. Right, it seems Ben Irving in a recent interview stated that Grandmaster 2 and 3 would be locked at launch to steady progression. This since has been reversed as they agreed this was a silly decision and thus the player base have complete access to all difficulties. Now repeat after me, all difficulties are available at launch. We good? Awesome! That's this out the way. I expect to see about another 100 videos on just this topic and then refuting it by saying the community won yet again. Good luck with GM3 by the way. On to the topic of PvP, Ben had the following to say in the recent interview with Windows. Yeah, one of the most important things to us was the idea of unbounded power and so we wanted that power fantasy to really pay off. 
that as you play more and more of the game, you really get powerful and even overpowered. We want you to be OP. So we didn't think we could hit that and then make a good PvP at the same time because you have to balance PvP so it's fair and those two things were in conflict. So basically the decision was, we think for launch, the unbounded power fantasy is more important and so that is why we didn't tackle PvP, but we're very open to it. I think it will depend on what's right for the game, as we launch the game and we monitor all the player feedback, will it make sense to introduce PvP to the game? Okay, then we can look to do that, and if it doesn't, then well, okay, we can not do it also. Now what scares me about this is even the notion of balancing, absolutely no to balancing, arena or nothing. In fact, if they are going to go and contemplate balancing, then skip PvP altogether. It's a highly controversial subject and one that constantly keeps coming up and one that people want to know about. Based on all things being said, I doubt we would see PvP at least within the next 3-6 to six months anyway as the focus is on PvE content and delivering that power fantasy experience. I will add this though, if Bioware decide to remove the power fantasy from Anthem that they are in the process of giving for the benefit of PvP, they will have made the biggest colossal failure the franchise is likely to ever experience. The only way this can work is with zero balancing and making it a arena mode with its own set loadouts. Please Bioware. Do not balance PvE and PvP at the same time. Do not do this. Keep the two disciplines separate. I don't care for PvP, I don't mind it being in the game as long as it's completely separate to the PvE. If I go out there in my javelin and I see that I am weaker because of PvP, that is directly hurting PvE and we do not want this. You want to create a power fantasy? Fine. You've given us a power fantasy. We feel insanely powerful with our ability. Do not remove that for the power of PvP. If you want to add PvP, make it arena mode. There is a market there for it. There is a demand there for it, but not at the expense of PvE. It's that simple. I have reached out to the developers and hopefully they can get back to me on a few questions I have asked about PvP and about other things. And if I do hear anything, you'll be the first to know. The final topic I want to touch on today is the convoluted microtransaction saga that keeps rearing its head. We know there are two forms of currencies in the game, one that is earnable, which despite the raw stating is being worked on to be fair to all, still presents no specifics. In my previous video I talked about skill up chiming in with a question about this and trying to get information on specifics which Bioware's Mark Dora deflected. There are two points of conversation here. One, the image that was leaked, which I have to admit was extremely unprofessional of those that attended the EA Game Changers program, and two, everything is based on an assumption going by the currency exchange of Fortnite. This is at least what I'm hearing and what I'm reading, it's all based on that exchange rate. Yes, assumptions. Nothing is actually founded here, it's all based on assumptions and the countless conversations we're having out there around this is again all based on assumptions. Now I appreciate people are concerned. I mean it's EA right, I get it, but the fact is we have no information. I think Dara's comment of it being worked on to the very last minute is probably true, however they also know by now what they are considering. They already have a range that is being worked on. The fact that they refuse to give any information on this is definitely an EA decision and not Bioware. That being said, I think EA is making a mistake holding out for so long and maybe during a live stream before launch this should be showcased and explored and explained. It's getting old and well you know the saying right? Where there is smoke, fire normally isn't far behind. EA and Bioware need to get on top of this. Of course this is all cosmetic right so it impacts the game none. Apex Legends, which is an amazing game by the way, you should totally go out and try it, launched with a $20 skin. It's a free to play game. So the exact same people complaining about Anthem are buying these skins. Yes, Anthem is not free to play. It's a live game service, much like Rainbow Six Siege, which I also hear nothing about by the way. But my question is this, and I'll leave this for you to ponder on and respond to in the comment section below. After you pay for two free skins in a free to play game, you hit the value of a fully priced game. How is it acceptable for a company after that to charge $20 a skin? At that point, what becomes the difference between a paid for product and a free to play game? Is there a difference? How can it be acceptable for one and not the other? Surely after the first two free skins they lose the right, no? So based on my understanding of the internet, 
It's okay for a free to play game to charge $20, $30 or even $40 for a skin because it's free to play but not for a paid product to charge $10, $20. Am I really the only one here seeing the contradiction? The double standards being employed here? Surely I can't be the only one that thinks this way or is it just for cheap views and cheap frills and just hating? Don't get me wrong, I don't like microtransactions, I'm an advocate against it but at the same time it's not going away. It will never go away and no matter how many people complain about it, the simple fact is it brings in so much revenue it's not going away. So my question remains as that, why is it okay to pay thousands of pounds for microtransactions and it's justifiable because it's free to play but not okay to spend $20 for a skin for a £60 product. It's okay to spend thousands of pounds on Fortnite, it's okay to spend thousands of pounds on Apex Legends, it's okay to spend thousands of pounds on Warframe, but when it comes to a paid product, a $20 skin is seen as the world's end. I mean, I don't understand this. At what point does the threshold change where it's no longer acceptable for a free-to-play game to charge an excess amount for cosmetics? Let me know in the comment section below. Obviously, I've made my stance clear. I don't like it, but I also at this point in time accept that it's going to be here. But with that said, I don't see the difference between the two models in the end. After you've bought two or three skins, you've paid the full price of a game. So why is it okay and justifiable after that to buy more and not complain about it for a free to play game, but it is okay to complain about a paid for product? Now I know what you're saying, right? Where the hell is the $40 coming from? I mean, if you guys can make an assumption based on one picture with no factual information, why can't I, right? Well, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about in this video. If you made it this far, that thumbs up underneath the video needs your clicking. Obviously, this is a great video and you want to see more amazing content by me, the one and only. So you want to subscribe too, right? That red button down below is pretty much sparkling with glee along with that little bell waiting to chime as you click on it. And to make sure everyone sees this amazing video, you want to share it with the whole wide world to get as much love and attention as it possibly can. Jokes aside, thanks so much for watching, and until the next video, remain legend.